Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football, continuing our deep dive for this Clemson Tigers program heading into spring practice in the 2024 season. We took a look at the offensive line, the defensive line, the offensive skill positions. Now we're taking a look at the back end of this Clemson defense, going to look at the secondary also that linebacker room, and you kind of see on the screen, and I know this graphic is not entirely updated, but it does give you a sense of how young this team is heading into 2024 in the back end of this defense. But although it's young, a lot of those young players played a lot in the 2023 season, and you're kind of excited to see what that step looks like heading into the 2024 season. Want to go back, talk a little bit about what we saw from this Clemson defense on the film in 2023, looking at some numbers, and then take a look at what this unit is going to look like in 2024. Really excited to get into it. Before we do, just want to say thank you to you guys. And this Clemson deep dive, the last couple of weeks have been, it's been a blast. The amount of feedback, the amount of input, that you guys have given the boys. That stuff means a lot. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And more importantly, would love to hear your feedback, your players that you think are breaking out in 2024. If I don't mention them here, appreciate you guys. And without further ado, let's get into this one. And I want to start with this linebacker room that you lose a guy like Jeremiah Trotter, who was an absolute dog for this Clemson defense for multiple years. When you look at this Clemson linebacker room heading into 2024, and I'm thinking, make no mistake about it, this is still one of the best linebacker rooms that you're going to see in the ACC, obviously led by Barrett Carter, who I don't think had the season that a lot of people expected him to have in 2023. He's still an extremely good linebacker, one of the best linebackers in the entire country, a guy that getting him back for year four is massive because you're talking about a lot of youth around Barrett Carter and behind Barrett Carter. Having that fourth year guy that has played a ton of football for Clemson is going to be absolutely massive at that linebacker spot. I think next to him, you're looking at a guy like Wade Woodyaz, Kobe McLeod, two guys that played a lot in 2023. I thought Wade Woodyaz played pretty good football in 2023. You'll battle it out with Kobe McLeod. The last guy I want to throw in this list, and that's true freshman five-star linebacker, Sammy Brown. And it's hard to look at this linebacker room, and it is a good linebacker room, right? Barry Carter, all ACC guy. Wade and Kobe McLeod, very good football players. It's hard to see Sammy Brown not playing at least a little bit as a true freshman and potentially, I mean, being a starter. Many of you guys know we've talked about Sammy Brown consistently on this channel. I mean, Sammy Brown, they don't make many Sammy Browns. The combination of the size, the speed, the physicality that he brings, and also just the headiness. You go back and watch him at high school. This is a guy that just gets that linebacker position. He is an apex predator out on the field, physically, certainly ready to play. Power cleans, what, 405 pounds, but I think he's mentally ready to play too between the ears. So, I mean, you're looking at four really good linebackers here in Barry Carter, Wade, Kobe McLeod and Sammy Brown really excited about what that linebacker room is going to look like in 2024. And again, playing behind a very, very good defensive line. That's a linebacker's best friend. Now scrolling back to the secondary, this is where I don't know how Dabo Sweeney continues to do it, but he just finds young talent that comes in and plays right away in the back end. And you take a look at the cornerback room heading into 2024. You lose a guy like Nate Wiggins, who, I mean, Nate Wiggins is going to be a first round NFL draft pick, in my opinion. Going back and doing the deep dive on this program, it was incredibly impressive what Nate Wiggins did. Was a true leader, was a true ball player for the Clemson Tigers in 2023. Now, I go back and look at this Clemson secondary. A couple of things that I noted on the film is one, this unit was phenomenal for Clemson in 2023. You look at some of the numbers. A 53% completion percentage given up. That was number four in the country and only 5.7 yards per pass attempt. That was number five in the country. It was a top secondary according to a lot of metrics. They didn't miss a lot of tackles. And we'll talk about that a little when we talk about some of the younger guys in this back end. Only gave up 1,200 yards after the catch, which is a very low number. And that kind of speaks to how Clemson tackled in that back end. And I went back and watched that Kentucky game to kind of get a feel for some of this young talent that you saw play a decent amount towards the back half of the season, but you saw them play a lot in that Kentucky game. 
they are very good in terms of man coverage. When the stuff, when it's simplified, when the defense was simplified for them and said, hey, this is your guy, you got to stay in the hip pocket and go make plays. I thought those guys played very good. Guys like Terrell, guys like Shelton Lewis, Khalil Barnes, what they struggled with, and it kind of makes a little bit of sense when you get some context, is when they were asked to play some zone coverages, uh, kind of giving off those zones, communicating in the back end, that's where this Clemson team struggled. And on paper, Kentucky throws for 308 yards. In my mind, a little bit of a misleading stat because it was four or five really big plays that Kentucky kind of got those yards from. Devin Leary only completed 16 passes against Kentucky, against Clemson in that bowl game. So I don't I think it's easy to look at that box score and say, oh, yep, these young guys aren't necessarily ready. You saw them play a lot of good football. And again, they get another offseason under their belt. They work on that communication. You saw a lot of confused looks in the back end for that Clemson defense against Kentucky. If you get less of those confused looks, like these guys are physically, I think, ready to play at a high level in 2024. And you start to look at the names and kind of evaluating what you have. I I think it starts with a guy like Avian Terrell, who was phenomenal for Clemson as a true freshman. Again, 32 targets, only gave up 15 catches, a 46% completion percentage, only missed two tackles all year. And this was a guy that you talk about true freshman playing that cornerback spot. That's rare to see guys step on the field and play as well as a guy like Avian Terrell did. And he didn't miss any tackles. And I think that was the one thing that really stood out. If you ask me, who could be Clemson's cornerback one heading into 2024? I think Terrell is a guy that probably first in my list. Now, you have a guy in Jaden Lucas who checks the boxes of everything you want as a cornerback. Obviously, he was a top 50 national prospect coming out of high school, going into year three. Jaden Lucas got to stay healthy. And if he stays healthy, I think you're getting a really good cornerback in Jaden Lucas too. Again, played good when he was healthy for Clemson in 2023, just wasn't able to stay on the field and kind of thrusted some of those young defensive backs into the fire a little bit. Another guy you're looking at here, Shelton Lewis, 17 targets faced, only gave up five catches, a 30% completion percentage when targeted. Shelton Lewis, you saw some communication problems against Kentucky in the back end. But again, a guy that when you ask him, I want you to put your hands on these wide receivers in man coverage, stay in their hip pocket. That's where he excelled. And when you have cornerbacks that can hold up in man coverage, it lets you be a lot more flexible in terms of what defenses that you're calling. There are some teams that just don't have the cornerbacks to play man coverage. They have to play zone. They don't have the athletic cornerbacks to do so. I think Clemson does. And I think that gives your defense a lot of flexibility in terms of the blitz packages, the pressure packages, and the coverage packages that you want to do. So I'm looking at guys like Avian Terrell, Jaden Lucas, and Shelton Lewis, some really high-quality boundary cornerbacks. You look at that nickel spot, and I think Khalil Barnes has that one locked up. I mean, three interceptions, faced 45 targets, only gave up 29 catches. He, again, was a very good football player for Clemson. You look at Shelton Lewis, Terrell, Khalil Barnes, they all played solid football. I would say above average. I mean, they played very good football for the Clemson Tigers in 2023 as true freshmen. What does it look like with another offseason under their belt going into year two? You look at this Clemson defense, not only in 2024, but in 2025, this looks to be a very good unit at that cornerback spot for a long time in Death Valley. Now you look at that safety position, and this is probably where I would love to hear from the Clemson fans in terms of what you think this is going to look like, because I'm probably a little bit concerned about the safety spot, right? You have a guy like RJ Mickens who coming back is massive. He's played over 1400 snaps, that veteran presence in the back end. You absolutely needed that. And I think your other starting safety might be Tyler Venables, a guy that what was a kind of a student assistant coach in 2023, rehabbing that injury. I think this would make a lot of sense. And you kind of look at the puzzle piece for this Clemson secondary. You have a lot of youth at the cornerback spot. There's a very good chance your three starting cornerbacks, your two boundaries, and your nickel are all true freshmen. And Terrell, Shelton Lewis, and Khalil Barnes maybe throw in Jaden Lucas as well, who, again, a guy that can play, but is still relatively inexperienced, only going into year three and having battled so many injuries. Tyler Venables is a guy that is probably just a defensive coach on the field, kind of gives you the Nolan Turner vibes from a couple of years ago for Clemson, where it is so important to have that veteran presence that can call the defense, that can help 
kind of get the coverages and get that communication right where you saw Clemson really struggle in 2024 or 2023, excuse me. So I kind of like that safety spot in terms of RJ Mickens, Tyler Venables. I think the question is, all right, who's coming in behind these two to provide that depth, right? I think you're good with, I think you're good with RJ Mickens and Tyler Venables, but I'm looking at not a ton of experience in the back end outside of those two at that safety position. A guy I would throw in there that many of you guys, if you've been listening for a while, know I'm a huge fan of. I got in my notes here, Ricardo Jones. This is another really heady safety. And you talk about aspects that you covet at that safety spot. Guys that can see what's happening in front of them, have those instincts, know where to be at the right place at the right time. Ricardo Jones, I mean, that was him at the high school level. Now, can he have that as a true freshman for the Clemson Tigers in 2024? That's a question. But I think he certainly could be an option in that safety room. But you look at this Clemson back end as a whole, I'm really confident in the cornerback spots. I maybe have some questions about the depth in that safety room, but RJ Mickens, Tyler Venables, two guys that have been around the program and been around the sport for a very long time. You got some nice experience to balance out the youth that you're going to have at the cornerback spot. I'm a fan of this Clemson secondary. And when you combine that with what they're going to have in that front seven with the linebackers that we talked about in the defensive line that we talked about last week, you're feeling pretty good about this Clemson Tigers defense heading into 2024. And again, this Clemson defense was very good in 2023. I think a lot of the problems that you saw, obviously, were on the offensive side of the football. Spring practice kicking off. I mean, I think the biggest question marks that we have are looking at this Clemson offense, looking at the development of K. Klubnik, looking at the development of those wide receivers, a lot of young talent that's in that room. And if Clemson can get it going on offense – I mean, I'm really confident in this defense. And you look at Clemson and where they struggled on defense, a lot of those struggles were being put in horrible spots from the offense, whether it was turnovers, whether it was three and outs. A better Clemson offense that can stay on the field longer and not have as many three and outs, I think is only going to help this. This defense has a ton of young talent, but a ton of young talent that has played a lot of football so far. Really excited about this back end. Again, would love to hear from you guys. Names that I might have left out. Can't thank y'all enough for rocking with the fellas. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to y'all later.